Congratulations, you're in the right place at the right time, and here's why. I know a couple people are having audio troubles. I was having some trouble hearing Reed, but I just want to make sure it's audio okay. Just give me a yes as I'm going through this, and I'll keep just plowing through the information for you. So congratulations, you're in the right place, and here's why. Right now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to take your trading to the next level by using a strategy or tactic or technique to help you find better trades. Now, how many of you in here use candlesticks as your main charting method, right? Like om almost all of us should, right? I don't think very many people are stuck back in the dark ages of bar charts. Some people still do. So regardless if you're using a time chart or a tick chart, you're probably focusing on a candlestick chart. So I'm going to give you a new opportunity to learn a new technique. I am not, just put your wallets away, I am not going to sell you an indicator, all right? I'm not here to sell you an indicator. But I, what I will do is I'll give you the opportunity if you want to buy a course on how to use an indicator. At the end of this presentation, I'll make that available to you. This indicator is freely available to everyone that has a decent charting package. And if you don't have a decent charting package, don't worry. I'll show you how to scan for this for free. All right, so what's this work on? works on stocks, options, futures, forex, bonds, and gold. also works on a lot of commodities. So that's what it works on. This is some of the back testing that we talked about, uh, and well, before, first, this is going to be different, but in a good way. We're going to have fun. I don't take myself very serious. I do take what I do for a living very seriously. There are three really good ways, in my opinion, in the United States to make a lot of cash or wealth building. There is trading and or investing. There is also real estate, which is called real, and then there's also business, B-I-Z. Combination of these threes are going to be your best friend. Okay, it's going to help you with some tax issues you're going to have if you make some cash. And heads up, if you make a million, you know you got to send Uncle Sam a check for five hundred thousand, right? Heads up, it stings a little bit, but you kind of get used to it after a while. Um, so we're going to talk about trading and investing today. All right, the S and P five hundred over the last five years. These are the results over the S and P five hundred for the last five years. On the stocks in the index, it worked on 430 out of 500, which means it had an 86% 86 86 success rate on those things in the S&P 500. If you would have done all these trades, in other words, if you would have had a long and then a short and then a long and then a long and then a long and then a short, and if you took all those signals, your return would have been 33%. Now, by just filtering that out instead of going every signal, long, short, long, short, long, short, I'm going to recommend that you stay on the side of the daily trend and you use a three bar confirmation. All right, That's going to increase your results from 33% to 79%. All right, Super simple, easy way to filter out these trades. All right, now that's for the S&P 500 on 430 stocks out of 500. That's not too shabby. It has been profitable on 29 currencies over the last 10 years. So if you trade any Forex or currency futures, it's worked on 29 different pairs over the past 10 years. That's a good track record. Okay. Now, in order to get that, you need to use multiple time frame analysis. And the ones we recommend is use a daily, use a 60 minute, and then you use a 10 minute in conjunction together, and those will give you the best signals. All right, time frame selection. This is the most important uh, slide I need you to take a look at. So pay attention to this. This is really important for the rest of the presentation. First, you got to figure out what your time horizon is. All right. So if I'm looking at a daily chart, I know that I'm probably going to be in this trade for weeks at a time, so two weeks or more. If I'm looking at an hourly chart, 60 minutes, then I know I'm going to be in this trade for days. Okay. And if I'm looking at a 10-minute time frame, I know I'm going to be in this thing for hours. So in the daily chart, the, the cloud is going to extend 20 to 30 days, which is basically one month, which is more than one week, right? The hour is going to extend three days, which means I'm going to be in this trade for more than three days, but a minimum of three is what it's going to extend. On the hours, if I'm looking at 10 minutes, it's going to extend hours. It's going to be two to four hours, and in this case, I'm looking at four hours. Everybody understand the concept of multiple time frame analysis where you're looking at a daily, you're probably going to be looking at that trade for weeks because that's going to extend to the right. Now, once you've got that under hand, and this is this is really what you want to focus on. The reason you want to focus on this is because it's the number one technique used in Japan 
seven years in a row, actually eight now, my bad, eight years in a row, it's been the number one best-selling book on technical analysis in Japan. And um, if you've ever had to um, translate anything to Japanese from English or from Japanese to English or English to Japanese, it's kind of a pain in the, book, in the butt. You're going to know exactly what's happening in seconds. It's designed to give you really good trends and really good signals. It's designed to produce clear signals. And actually, the word Ichimoku stands for at a glance. So immediately, once I show you how to use this, you'll know within a second or two, three seconds tops, what I should do. I'm either going long, I'm going short, or it does not qualify and I'm going to pass. So let's dig into the meat of what this is. This is the edge you want and this is the edge for you right now. This is why. It's one of the very few indicators that's going to give you what happened in the past. A ton of indicators do that. Some indica indicators will tell you what it's doing during the present, like right now. Very few will tell you what the price action should do in the future. And that's the reason I like this indicator so much. All right, let's dig in. Do you see on your screen a black chart? Now, this is all going to be all theory. All right, now you're going, oh, I knew it, daggone PowerPoint junkies. No, 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 I'm going to teach you the theory first. Then I'm going to jump right into TradeStation, and we're going to screen the markets. We're going to look for some trades, and then you're going to give me symbol after symbol, and I'm going to show you in real time on real charts how this actually works. So you'll be, I'll tell you, like, looks great here, looks bad here, looks choppy, don't do anything with that. So do you see a black chart with a chart in your screen? Yes, I right, cool. All right, so this is what it looks like. Here are some of the main theories of Ichimoku. All right, I know I didn't sneeze. That's how you pronounce it. So if your price action of whatever you're trading is above the cloud, what it doesn't really matter what color it is, okay? If it's, if it's above the cloud, if the price action is above the cloud, that's considered bullish. Makes sense, right? It looks like a trend line. And then this thing is going to act like a nice little fluffy mini trampoline and most of the time it's going to hold sometimes it's not going to hold and it's going to get up here and bounce again it's going to hold again bounce 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 so when we're talking about the past this is the future part you see the cloud c l o u d this helps if you can spell is considered the future because if this thing is telling you it's going up to sideways sideways to slightly up if it sells off it should go to there and then bounce and then go higher that's the first theory. Now, there's a bunch of different squiggly lines on this indicator. Ichimoku, cloud, is what it's called. So this is the cloud, C-L-O-U-D. This is the yellow line called the turning line, T-U-R-N. And it's a nine-point midpoint average, which is definitely different than a nine-period moving average. All right? So there's slightly difference on how they're calculated. And as you can see, that's going to be your first support. So this is now. This is the future. Let's take a look at more squiggly lines. Cloud, C-L-O-U-D. Turning line, T-U-R-N. And this is called the standard line, the STD. Okay. Now, if this thing breaks the yellow, where do you think it's going to go? Just logically, where will it go? Yeah, if it breaks the yellow, which it's done a pretty good job in this PowerPoint, holding that, then it'll probably go to the purple. Once it gets to the purple, it'll probably bounce off of there and go back up. If it doesn't do that, then it's going to go to the top of the cloud. So think of that as support one, support two, and support three. If it breaks through the cloud and then closes for one, two, or three bars below that, uh-oh, look out. We could definitely get smoked to the downside. All right. Here is the rest of what is considered part of the Ichimoku cloud. So you've got the cloud, C-L-O-U-D. You've got the turning line, T-U-R-N. You've got the standard line, S-T-D. And then you've got this white line called the lagging line, the L-A-G. So this is the past. This is the present. I'll just type now here. And then this is going to be the future, F-U-T. So it's telling you this thing is trading higher. It's in a valid uptrend. Support is holding. If that does not work, and if it breaks support, it's either going to go to purple or top of blue, which should hold. So your job is just to buy pullbacks and use those other support areas as your stops. Okay, pretty simple. Now let's go through some of how this is calculated. All right, how it's calculated. And I started at 3:50. What time did I start? I think I get to four, so I got a little bit of time. I think there might be running a few minutes late, so I'll just fire 
through this stuff. The 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 price action or the turning line, this red line, this red line right, right, right close here. We're going to first calculate that. The turning line is the midpoint calculation where you're going to take the high and the low of the last nine days and you're going to divide those by two. So you take today and you take count back nine days. You find the low, you find the high. You add those two suckers together and you divide it by two and you come out with 450.07, which the indicator just tells you that there. So on this red line, that's going to be 450.07, which should be support, should be bought. If it breaks that, we're going to fall off to the standard line, which is calculated as follows. The midpoint of the high and the low of the last 26 sessions, you're going to take the high and the low of the last 26 bars, you're going to divide by two, that number is going to be your midpoint. All right, now here we go. Here's the turning line. Here's the standard line, and how this thing's calculated is you take today, you count back 26 bars, you find the low, you find the high, you add those together, you divide by two, and that number comes out to be 425.42. So if we break this area at 450.07, then we should go down here to 425.42, okay? So far, super easy. Cloud's a little bit different. So basically, with this indicator, the price will either go up or down for sure, right? Almost a guarantee. No, 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 Tim, there are no guarantees other than I guarantee you'll probably lose money trading. Okay? What this will, when I show you the live charts, it'll make more sense to you. So it's going to tell you, like, hey, this thing's in an uptrend. You should buy all pullbacks until that is broken. And then it'll tell you, all right, now it's in a new trend. You should stay on the downside. There is a transitional period that's a little awkward with it, but it doesn't happen that often. So the cloud is the midpoint of the turning line and the standard line shifted 26 bars forward. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the turning line and the standard line. We're going to take the midpoint between those two and shift it forward in time 26 bars. That's going to give you a piece of the cloud. All right. The mid Now the cloud span B is the midpoint of the high and the low of the last 52 sessions shifted. So what you're going to do is you're going to take, say, this candle and then you count back 52 bars, you're going to take the midpoint between those two and shift it in the future 26 bars. That's going to give you another piece of the cloud. All right, lagging line. Lagging line is just the price line close shifted back 26 bars. All right, so that's pretty simple. So in other words, this price action is shifted back 26 bars. That's the blue line. So if here is today, you shift it back 26 bars, that's going to be your blue line, okay? That'll be your blue line. All right, Ichimoku cloud charting signals. Lagging line crossing the cloud, price crossing the cloud, price and lagging line touching the cloud, the cloud spans crossing, the turning line crossing, and the standard line, all right? So let's take a look at all these signals, then we're going to scan the markets. By far, my favorite signal is when the lagging line crosses either below the cloud or above the cloud. Here you can see massive uptrend. Here you can see massive downtrend. So you would short it when the lagging line crosses the major uptrend of the cloud, which signifies a new trend is about to start and it's not higher, it's lower. Second best signal is when the price action crosses the cloud by either one to three bars. And you can see right there, it's faster signal. And you can see if you shorted Apple at like 620 or 630, and held it all the way down here to about 480 where it's about to cross in this example, that's a pretty good trade. Most people can't pull that off. But with this, you'll at least have the ability to know which way it's going. Now here are some other signals. When the lagging line touches the bottom of the cloud, and when the price action touches the bottom of the cloud, it's usually a good fade trade. This signal here is a little bit more fast, but it's also inconsistent until you get a, a solid trend going on. So this would be a short. I wouldn't short that because you're still above the cloud, but it might be a good place to take some profit. Once we cross below the cloud on the, on the price and the lagging line, then if the red and green lines cross and then cross back, that's a decent short. Chris, cross, good short. Chris, and then cross, good short. All right, so those are some of the main signals. Here are the bullish signals. Price above the cloud is bullish. Price in the cloud, which are bullish if they come from the bullish side. The lagging line crossing the cloud is the main signal of trend change. Price crossing the cloud is an earlier but less reliable warning sign of trend change. 
Price and the lagging line will often support the cloud at the edges, and the cloud spans crossing may be a sign that the trend is changing. Be on the lookout for thick clouds after a run-up could mean that the trend is about to change. All right. So let's go to the next slide, which is bearish signals. And they're pretty much the exact same. They're just in the opposite. I'm going to take a quick drink of water as you read this, and then I'm going to move on to the next slide. We'll take but a second. There we go. All right, so those bearish signals are the exact opposite of bullish signals. And then I think what we've got set up here is we're going to take a look at some trading charts in real time. All right, I already gave you the back testing. I already talked about time frame selection, talked about multiple time frame analysis. One of the last questions that I usually get from people is what's the best stop to use? Parabolic SAR works really good. I would also use the bottom of the cloud if I'm long, and I would use the top of the cloud if I am short. Now, you're probably sitting there going, that's great. That looks like it kind of works. How about real? So I'm going to exit out of this PowerPoint, because I've got a few minutes, and we're going to spend the rest of the time doing some live stuff, okay? Because PowerPoint is useful up to a point, but what, what's really going on in the market? So I've got a daily chart. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look. Now, one thing that will help you is if you use the ADX, it'll help you qualify if you're in a trend or not. All right. To be clear, you do not guarantee that based on this indicator, the price will either go up or down. To be clear, Tim, I cannot be, I cannot guarantee that you will be alive in five seconds from now. I do not guarantee anything. I'm a registered representative. I can say potentially, but I cannot guarantee you anything. I can tell you what I do. So let's start out with ES, at ES. All right, so what is this in? So it's saying that, see how the cloud is flat? That's, that's flat, you don't have a huge advantage. It is higher above the cloud, so it's a better long than short. Now let me teach you how to use the ADX really quickly. This will save you a lot of time, and I go through this in the course. You see this green line right here? This is called the threshold line. If the, if the squiggly yellow and, yellow and red line is above the green line, we're in a trending environment, okay? If we're below the green line, we're in a non-trending environment. So does the ES classify as something that we want to touch on a daily time frame? No, but you can mess with it on an intraday time frame. Because the ADX is 12, I need it to be 20 or, my, or higher to let me know that this thing is trending. And as you can see, index futures on the S&P have just been a nightmare. Now, let's take a look at at YM. This would be the Dow, a little bit different scenario. now. Is the ADX above 20, yes or no, right here? I'm circling it right here. If the ADX is above 20, it means this thing should be trending. Perfect. So the Dow's trending in what direction? Well, let's just zoom in here. Well, it's below the cloud. That's a short. It sold off, ran up to resistance, sold off, ran up. It's probably going to go to 17,577, and then I'll short it there with a tight stop loss, and my target will be 17,326. Does that make sense? Let's take a look at the Russell. I'm going to do a few markets, and then I'm going to take symbol requests. All right, the Russell is trending because the ADX is above 20. It's 29.24. The squiggly line is above this green threshold line. It means it's trending. It's in a downward spiral as it's broken below the cloud. Lagging line is following. If the Russell was to bounce up to 12.29, I would short it. Or if the Russell went down below 12.09, I would short it. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is non-trending, wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. The ADX is 1047, not a great trending market right now. I'd leave it alone. If you, held, if you held a gun to my head and say which way, long or short, I'd say long because it's above the cloud. Okay. So we did S&P, Russell, NASDAQ, YM. Let's take a look at bonds at US. So the bond market is trending. You can see here that the ADX is above 20. It's also above the cloud. Now, today it broke, it closed below the yellow line, which means that, yes, it's in a valid uptrend, but it may make a run for 154, 20, 30 seconds. I still like it long, so what I have to do is I either got to let it come down here and float down to 154, 20, 30 seconds, or if I'm aggressive, I could short that with a tight stop loss and ride it to right there. Let's take a look at gold at GC. Gold, ever since it's broke below the cloud here, it's been a massive short. And gold is trending pretty decent right now. As you can see in the ADX here, it's above 20. So gold is a great short right here at 11.16 with a target of about 10.50. Let's take a look at crude oil, at crude oil. So here's another nice little, all right, this is a good example of um, a good short. See how much, you, look at this. 
Crude oil has been a short back here in August. And it's been nothing but a short all the way until, aha, look at here. Then it got to be a decent long right here, and then it went back below. Now it's another decent short, and it continues to cruise lower. See how that yellow line is kind of acting like somebody holding your head underwater? So every time it comes up for a breath of fresh air, boom, yellow line dunks it back down again. So those are some basic futures contracts. Let me show you one that I'm um, liking right now is coffee because we're about to get a, an official buy signal on this. So it's trending well. ADX is above 20. We've got one, two, three, four, five bars above the cloud. See how the lagging line is almost about to cross? So when that happens, I'll get along some coffee. That looks real good. So you guys give me some symbols real quick, and I'll go through them and tell you, okay, A-M-B-A. -A. Please put them in all caps, please, so I can read them. All right, so it's trending pretty good. It's 1866. I would buy this at 105, and my target would be 120. Facebook, okay, and if I miss some, I'm not being rude. There's just a lot of people in here. Facebook is a great long here at 94. Target of 100. Stop would be around 95. Yeah. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. I did it wrong. I messed up. Hold on. Stop would be around 92.43. Entry at 95.15. Target 100. AMZN. Okay. Amazon is above the cloud. Massive long. Stop of 519. Target of 600. Co I just did coffee. At KC. I just did coffee. Where were you at? Coffee will be a good long above when the lagging line crosses. 139. Stop 134. Target 160. Uh, at is it DAX? Give me the symbol for DAX. I don't. I'm not actively in the DAX market. TD, not too much. Uh, TD is a great short with a tight stop loss and a target of 38. Uh, AAPL. I know what the DAX market is. But I just don't know what the symbol is for trade station. Um, this is a good short, massive short with a stop of 121 and a target of 105. PDCO, PDCO is a good little long breaking away to the high side today. Stop would be 50, target would be 56. BIIB, BIIB is a breakaway to the downside. Massive short stop of 356 and a target of 250. FIT, little Fitbit. Fitbit right now on the daily, it's a little bit, I don't have enough background, so what I'd have to do is I'd have to go on Fitbit, I'd have to go on to a 60 minute. Fitbit is a short with a stop of 46 and a target of 38. Let me go back into the daily chart. So really quick, see how easy it is to look at stuff. LL is going to be a short. So I immediately know that LL, once it broke the cloud here, it was a short. And this all happens in real time. Okay? All happens in real time. None of this is behind or lagging other than that white lagging line, right? So then when it crossed the cloud here, that was a short on the first day, second day, third day, and LL's been a massive short ever since. GG, if you have a minute, please go back to crude. All right, so GG is a good short here at uh, 1478, stop of 16 and a target of 12. Here's that crude oil again at CL. There's crude oil, a little bit bigger chart. Tesla and GMCR, all right, cool. Uh, CVX, okay, CVX, CVX is a good short uh, with a stop of 84.97 and a target of 80, uh, where are we at here, uh, GMCR, I got into kind of a heated debate with a, a lady on a webinar the other day going, well, CMGR is, uh, fundamentally, it should be $70, I'm like, well, technically, it's trading at 50, so fundamentally, I don't really care what it says, it's going lower. It's a short here. It's been a short here. It's been a short here. It is a short here. It's still a short. It's going to go to 40. So it looks nasty. NVAX. NVAX, good little long. Uh, I think I looked at that a minute ago. Uh, 1277, target 16. Uh, enter it at 350. Stop 1277, target 16. How do you determine your stops and targets? I cover all that in the course, but I'll give you a little a quick tutorial on how I do that. If I know I'm going to get long here and I'm risking this much, then all I do is I multiply that in my head and go, okay, there's risking one to make one, there's one to make two, there's one to make three. Does that make sense? It's just an old professional trader trick that we just like, you just do a, a quick guesstimation like how much, what's my risk? All right, my reward needs to be two or three times times that. And you just do it in your head real quick. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to do after you get used to it. 
Netflix, N F L X. Netflix is a good long now at 123, 124, stop 113, and a target of 160. SCO, SCO, great trade long, stop 102.91, target 130. All right, so we've had enough of that. So now that you've seen how it's done, simple, pretty easy to use, right? So we've looked at some live charts. Here are some success stories. The course was awesome. I've taken one bond trade and made over 900. Do you think I'm happy? I just entered the bond trade, shorted again where I took further profits earlier after you made me greedy for further possible drops. I'm happy dancing. This is the first time I've had a successful trade during the course. I have the hardest head in the world. You couldn't have made it simpler. Dude, thanks. You're likely the only reason I've kept at this trading and now that I'm profitable, which is cool. I can't thank you enough. I will, it was really great, and I can't wait to attend the gold trading class. Thank you so much, Greg. The webinar series was a great experience, very informative and educational and lots of fun. But that's no surprise. All your courses are great learning opportunities and great values. All right, so I'm asking you if you want to be one of our next success stories. I cannot guarantee that. I will do my best to help you, but I cannot guarantee your success. This is called life. This is not called a guarantee. All right? Who's this for? If you're serious about making money in the real markets, I'm going to share with you how I use Ichimoku. All right? And now stick with me at the end of this presentation. I'm going to show you how you can freely scan for this, even if you don't have Ichimoku on your charts right now. If you're looking for a proven system, if you can follow a simple set of rules and directions, and if you know that your success is tied to you taking action. All right? So who is this not for? It is not for holy gale seekers, which I meant to say grail seekers there. Uh, if you suffer from hopium, if you're just trading just for a hobby, really not for you. It's really for serious people that are trying to make real money. If, you, if you're a guru surfer, if you're following me and 400 other people online, focus. Pick two or three, call the rest, and just learn from those. Um, if you can't make a decision, obviously the course is not for you. If you like to make things overly complicated for no reason, obviously not for you. So there are three types of people in the world, those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that ask what just happened. Now, let's go into what you're going to learn. Here is a fraction of what you'll learn in the number one best-selling Ichimoku course on the English-speaking world. Seven proven setups, trading rules and indicator settings, checklist with cheat sheets, with entries and exits, stop losses and targets, how to scan the markets with Ichimoku, how to filter out the best trades, you'll never guess what to do next, and I'll teach you how to avoid some of the head fakes. Yeah. All you have to do is, oh, I forgot to tell you, that you have absolutely zero risk. It's 100% satisfaction guaranteed, no questions asked. If you don't love it, I don't want your money. You can take the entire course, and then you can call me up and say, I don't like your accent. I don't like how you talk. I want my money back. I'll do that. I always over-deliver, period. My goal is for you to get a, a 10x return on your investment. Now, if you go to this link, and I'll put it in the chat box, hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy. I think I'll put it in the chat box if I can find it here. You, um, you can go to hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy. You can also call area code 859-963-3445. Area code 859-963-3445. Here's what all you get. Ichimoku Cloud Charting Secrets, 197. How to use Ichimoku with candlesticks, $97. I'm going to give you four follow-up webinars at $97 and one day of live trading for $97. Okay? So that's a value of 488 bucks. Your special offer, only $97 today. If you go to hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy, there is a catch. We're only taking 50 people from this webinar, okay? And there are several hundred people in here, so they'll probably go pretty, class, pretty fast. So does everybody understand the offer? Give me a yes if you understand the offer. Pretty simple. I'm giving you about a $500 worth of value for $97. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about Ichimoku. All right, now I'm going to go back to live charts until Reed tells me to shut up because I know he, he, he's really good at making sure everybody stays on time. Here's the link right here, hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy, area code 
three, four, four, five. I'm going to put it in the chat box here for you, okay? Any questions on the course, just let me know. Is it a subscription? No, it's not a subscription. It's a one-time fee of $97. Also, while I'm answering questions, give me some more stock examples, and I'll show you what they look like on that chart. Before I do that, I promised I would do this. Does everybody see this web browser right here? This is how you scan for this thing if you just want to use a free web browser like like, like stock charts. You go to stockcharts.com, you scroll down here, you go to predefined scan results. This is just on stockcharts.com. And then from there, well, hold on, let me get it back. There you go. And then you scroll down here where it says candlestick patterns. And then you see where it says Ichimoku patterns. Moved above the cloud, moved below the cloud. You hold your control key down, left click, left click. Up here to the top, you'll see it's working. And it's going to sit there and work and work and work. And then what it do, what it'll do is it'll find the ones that are just crossing above the cloud or below the cloud on a daily basis. And then you can chart those on your own charting platform. But sometimes this little service, it's free, so it's slow sometimes. This will this will enable you if you don't have TradeStation or Toss or eSignal or one of the major platforms that has Ichimoku installed in it. It will help you. There you go. So there you can. There's a predefined moved above the cloud. Then I click based upon volume. I filter it by volume. Click click. Let's see predefined over here by volume. Click click. And it'll filter us for us based upon volume that they're trading. And once again, it's scanning. It's a little slow just because everybody and their brother is using it right now on this webinar. So that's all you got to do. And then once you do that, so let me give one of these. Let me see one that's got decent volume. Oh, there's one. Nah, it's a pink. That's an NYSE. Hold on just a second. Let it let it scan its little self here, and it'll tell you what's going on. All right, it's still scanning. And here's one right there, 319. BG.L. Let's see if we got any others. Usually their scanner is not this slow. So if you try it when four or five hundred of us are not trying to do it all at one time, it works a little faster. So stockcharts.com, predefined scan results. Moved above the cloud, moved below the cloud. There you go. There you go. So we're going to take a look at this one right here. Let's go da, 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 financials, healthcare, GILD. All right, so GILD, we're going to click on the chart, and then I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to filter, and this is all covered in the course. Ichimoku full, and then I'm going to say none, and then I'm going to hit update, and you can see here, look here, GILD is a new long because it crossed above the cloud. Does that make sense? Sorry about the browser thing. Sometimes, you know, it's the internet. Sometimes the stock chart, they're a little bit slow. It is a free service. does not cost you a dime in order to scan for moved above the cloud, moved below the cloud. I just teach you how to use it. Now, if you have a different platform like TradeStation, I can kind of scan for these in real time real quick. I can just go click, 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 and it will tell me if something moved newly above. See how this works? It says, look, newly above, new above, new above, new below, new below. It's a little bit easier. It's a little bit faster. It's a better platform, though. All right, AIG. AIG is a good long. It's trending. Stop 62.63, target 68. CSCO. Cisco is non-trending. The ADX is 9.44. It's not worth your time and attention unless you're already long, and it better hold 28. Um, currencies, give me a pair, and I'll look at it. DLR, DLR. Reed, you just tell me, man, and I'll stop when you need me to. Um, DLR is non-trending. It's at 18. Looks like it's about to cross the cloud. So if it was to get up around 68, it'd be an interesting long. DIS Disney. Disney is a brand new short. It broke below the cloud. One, two, three bars. Lagging lines going with you. Disney's going to go to below $100. It'll go to 100 on its way to 95. All right. GBP. Forward slash AUD. Uh, that is a great long right now with a tight stop loss and a target of 220. Yep, good to go. MBLY, MBLY, MBLY is a great long with a stop of 59.37 and a target of 75. Yep. We got time for like one more there, Hebert. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right, uh, at YM, at YM, the YM is a good short. With a stop of 17577 uh, and a target of 17327. Yeah, but scan all the futures markets in real time in TradeStation and everything in real time. Class is on demand. It is on demand, and then you've got some follow up live stuff available. But the main course is on demand. Good luck. Thanks for having me, Reed. I appreciate it. 
see you guys on the next one, and I wish you the best of uh, trading the rest of the week.